This week on News Center, a seminar is held on mountaintop removal, a Greek organization hosts a spring sing for tornado victims, and News Center speaks with students on their plans for this summer. All this and more today on News Center. Good evening and welcome to News Center. I'm Derek Gramke. And I'm Shelby Steele. This is your news for April 12, 2012. Breckenridge Hall played host to a forum on mountaintop removal. New Center's Hardy Breeding has more on the story. The Masters of Arts and Social Sciences has hosted a series of forums in Breckenridge as part of their spring lineup. Tuesday, April 10th, was the forum on mountaintop removal and all the health issues associated. The forum was conducted by Dr. Michael Hendricks from the University of West Virginia. Dr. Hendricks sat down with New Center to discuss how he became interested in the issue. Uh, I read a book called Big Coal. It was uh, written by a journalist. It wasn't a scientific book, but it just talked about the history of coal and some of the problems that people said were related to the mining activity. And it, it interested me when I started to look at the research literature on what we actually knew. I d couldn't find anything. I was really surprised. Um, and so I started to look into it. I didn't know what I would find, but as I look at it more and more, you know, I really think that that our dependence on coal is probably the biggest public health problem that we have in West Virginia and, and maybe in Kentucky as well. Partly because of the environmental problems, but partly because of all those socioeconomic problems that are related to it too. Hendricks says that people in mountaintop mining regions don't have a say in changes being made, or the political connections to make change possible. The demographic picture for people that live in these mining environments is, is poor. They're, the poverty rates are higher than the rest of the region or the country. The education levels are lower. The unemployment rates are higher. Uh, people who don't have economic power usually don't have political power and so they're not able to control the environments that they live in as well as other people who do. Uh, I'm obviously I'm just kind of assuming that that would be the case but I think it's a pretty safe assumption that if you did have coal deposits that existed hypothetically in the hills of Hollywood they wouldn't be blowing up the mountains around Hollywood. New Center also caught up with Dr. John Hennon who says conditions have not improved but public awareness has. I, I certainly believe in terms of public awareness and the mobilization by people from all walks of life to try to get rid of this particularly destructive type of mining which we believe contributes to poor health and poor water, uh, poor investment climate for alternative businesses and all kinds of social and economic negatives. More and more people are aware of the issue and working to, to uh, phase it out or abolish it altogether but at the same time the uh, the coal industry has been very successful in in uh, obstructing any of those efforts uh, they have a very powerful lobby not only in Kentucky but nationwide uh, but but especially in Kentucky uh, and I, I frankly don't think things are getting better um, except in terms of public awareness and a knowledge base for how bad this type of mining really is. But in terms of political progress, uh, it's been very slow. Reporting for News Center, this is Hardy Breeding. For more information on Kentuckians for the Commonwealth, visit kftc.org. Last week, Sigma Phi Epsilon held a choir competition in Button Auditorium. New Center's Cody Pierman has more. Last Thursday evening, Sigma Phi Epsilon held their first annual spring sing. New Center spoke with the fraternity's vice president of programming, Cody Hart, on how the event got started. Last month, we had a natural disaster with the tornadoes that went through Menifee County, Johnson County, and the surrounding counties. We just were trying to find a way that we could impact people that were affected in a positive way and I came up with the idea of a spring sing. Uh, some other schools do it and it's just a choir competition to where uh, you try and put your your best singers together to perform just something to raise money for the disaster relief. 
After we decided that we were going to do the Spring Sing, we went around on campus and found organizations that wanted to be a part of what we were trying to achieve. Our goal was to raise money for disaster relief, so we went straight to the Greeks first and tried to get as many Greek organizations as possible. And then after we had our base of Greek organizations, we went to the music department and we found the Black Gospel Ensemble and Dr. Escalante. I think we had nine uh, competing choirs, including the Black Gospel Ensemble, uh, which was a treat for all of us. So everybody came together and we all picked our songs and we spent a majority, I want to say, probably an hour and a half in Button Auditorium singing our hearts out. He later discussed the awards that were given out to some of the participants, including Best Overall, People's Choice, and Best Comedic Act. The People's Choice Award was determined by how much change they put into their cups at the end of the event, by the end of the event. Uh, and Gamma Phi Beta won that. I want to say they had like 15 to $20 in change in their cup, which is, they blew everyone else out of the water. The comedic performance goes to Kappa Sigma. They did an auctioneer performance, which was awesome. And then Delta Gamma won overall with their singing of Price Tag. And they had, I want to say, 20 some odd girls perform with them. They did an excellent job. Even though this was the first time the event took place, it was very successful. Spring Sing raised over $700 for the Tornado Relief, which is a great accomplishment for us. We were hoping to just make a couple hundred, so 700 was a great, great accomplishment. We see it improving over the next couple years with future participants increasing and things like that. But $700 for Tornado Relief was absolutely unbelievable for our first time. We plan on doing Spring Sing from here on out. It won't be for Tornado Relief after this year probably, but the idea is still the same. We're still going to find something that everybody cares something about, enough to raise money, and we're going to go ahead and you know donate all the funds to that. So hopefully we can keep this going, because I had a great time at Spring Sing, and I hope everybody else did. Reporting for News Center, I'm Cody Perry. We'll be right back after the break with Haley Murphy and a quick look at weather. Need a way to find new music? Tune in to WPRC. Also, Hoso does Signal in the Sky, featuring new and current independent artists. Eric Riddle's Electro World, featuring dubstep and electronica. Tanner Boyd's Laugh, a great comedy show, full of laughs and gags. Derek Moore's Moorhead Metal Vault, a headbanger's delight, loud and in your face. Tyler Mullen's Bluegrass Connection, a classic experience and instrumental tradition. WPRC, great radio style entertainment. Tune into the show, broadcasting on channel 77, starting at 6 p.m. Also, check us out on Facebook. I'm so freaking bored. I cannot handle another hour of the Kardashians. I wish we'd go bowling. Me too. Great. Your wish has come true. Wilson Lanes, located inside of Laughlin Health Building on campus, has six lanes of pure bowling fun, and now with automated scoring. Two dollars per game and a dollar shoe rental. How could you pass this up? For those students with places to go and no car, don't forget to ride your bike. Riding your bike can be a quick way to class, and it's also an enjoyable way to ride through town. Just remember to pay attention and be safe. For over 25 years, the Kentucky Folk Art Center has provided the community with some of the finest folk art pieces amongst the region. The first floor gallery displays a periodically alternating exhibit of the center's most impressive permanent collection, as well as a wide array of unique items for sale at its gift shop, such as jewelry, sculptural pieces alongside t-shirts. The second floor hosts several different folk art exhibits throughout the year. Visit the Kentucky Folk Art Center Monday through Saturday from 9 to 5 located at 102 West 1st Street in Moorhead, Kentucky. 
Welcome back to News Center. I'm Haley Murphy. Here's a quick look at your weather for today. As you can see, the current temperature around 56 degrees and sunny outside. Definitely a big warm up from this morning as we were seeing frost when we stepped out our doors. So, a lot, a lot, a lot prettier day today. Take a look at our record temperatures. As you can see, back in 1985, or back in 1930, we had a high of 85, so nowhere near that today. 1976, a low of 24, and we are definitely seeing temperatures close to that this morning. So obviously it warmed up quite a bit. Take a look at our, our state map, courtesy of WKYT. As you can see, not much going on. A little bit of showers down towards London, but other than that, a clear overall. Taylor temperatures across the bluegrass, as you can see, 57 down in London, 57 in Jackson, 56 in Lexington, 58 over in Ashland. Take a look north towards Kevington around 59, the capital around 57, Louisville around 59, and Bowling Green around 62. So pretty consistent across the bluegrass. Um, not too bad overall, looking to be a really pretty day. We'll take a look now at News Center Notices, and we'll be right back. Welcome to New Center Notices. This week we have two actresses from The Tempest with us. So welcome to the show, girls. Hi, thanks Thank for having us. So first, can you guys tell me what The Tempest is about? <laughs> well, um, it's a William Shakespeare piece, and it's about a guy who is crashed on an island who does magic and forces all the dukes and people to come on the island and cause havoc. And there's a bunch of magic that goes <laughs> along with that. <laughs> Sounds very exciting. Do you guys know how the play was chosen? Each year our professors talk and deliberate on what the whole season is going to be and I think a lot of our professors are Shakespeare fans so that's probably why they chose it <laughs> but we don't know the exact reason why. But How long that. has it taken you guys to like prepare and practice and get ready for the week of shows? We started, auditions were in early February, and we've been rehearsing ever since, and we're getting ready to start tech week. So we'll do all the lights and sound and video projections and finish this up this week. So being in the play, you guys are also like in school and doing all that. So is it hard to maintain your schoolwork as well as practicing? It can be really difficult, but you have to get used to being able to do your homework sometimes sneakily backstage. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just, I don't know, we're here for so long during the day. Sometimes we don't get out till about 11, but we all seem to make it in a way. But we, I do my homework backstage. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when can we see The Tempest? The show opens on Tuesday the 17th, next Tuesday, and it closes uh, the following 22nd. Sunday, the 22nd. Yeah. And you can go to the box office and get tickets. Yeah. Is this the first play you girls have participated in? No. no. <laughs> we're both juniors. We uh, we were both in Noises Off a couple last yep. year. Um, Grease. No Nonsense. Nonsense. Tick, tick, boom. And uh, August Osage County. And some dance shows. What else can we be looking forward to from the theater department? We have the student director student director one acts coming up and Ashley's actually one of the directors so um, it's for our directing class we pick a show there's ten of us in it right now and we perform the last Friday of class which is May 4th um, at I'm pretty sure it's 7 p.m. so it's a free thing come out come see students performing for everyone is this what you girls want to do when you graduate do you want to go into the yeah. theater yes. yeah um, what do you plan to do after you graduate? Do you have plans? Uh, it's, it's just a question of which big city do I want to hit up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I love Chicago. We spent so. our spring break at Chicago, so I'm pretty sure we're, pretty we're bent on there. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> all right, girls, well, thank you for coming on the show today, thank and you. I wish you all the luck with your upcoming events. And we'll be right back with another look at weather with Haley Murphy and Cecil Pergram with sports. 
When you got some homework and you need a place to go When you're working on a project and your computer is slow There's a little place on campus that I think that you should know about The first story of the library is what I'm talking about Walk past Java City and then you will see The new commons area is where you should be They got computers and printers, couches, tables and more It's the perfect place to go for study time galore What's wrong, dude? Second guessing that cheeseburger? Maybe you should take another look at that before you eat it. Don't eat me! Now how could you be thinking of eating that when really you're thinking of a slow-cooked chili-covered geodog with cheese with your selected choice of chips? Wow. Throw that thing away. Located on the first floor behind the elevator. What about me? Become a multimedia production major. We provide skills development for using technology to create audio and visual messages for use in all digital media. The program is designed to help students become highly marketable candidates for careers that include radio and television production, digital cinema, narrative and documentary filmmaking, news production, and audio and video production. Eagle Trace Golf Course is just minutes from Moorhead, Kentucky, right off the Sharky Farmer's exit. Bring your friends and family for a fun and affordable round of golf. The course features a driving range, putting green, and a special discount for MSU students. Call 606-783-9073 to arrange your tee time or group outing. Welcome back to News Center. Let's take another look at your weather. As you can see right now, around 57 degrees in Moorhead and very sunny, so it's turning out to be a really beautiful day. Humidity around 37, 37% and a little bit of a breeze, 3 miles per hour east, so not too bad at all. Take a look at our temperatures across the bluegrass, maps courtesy of WKYT. As you can see, 57 in London and Jackson, 56 in Levington, Le Le Lexington, 57 in Frankfurt, 59 up in Covington, 58 over in Ashland, 62 around Bowling Green, and 59 in Louisville. So overall, pretty consistent temperatures, looking to be a pretty good day. Not as warm as we'd like, but it's getting there. Take a look of our radar across the bluegrass. Not much going on. A little bit of a storm system down here, but probably not going to produce anything. Maybe a couple clouds overnight, but it should stay pretty clear. Take a look at our national map. You can see Pretty clear overall, a little bit of a storm system around here that might come and push its way in over the weekend, but probably won't affect us too much until Monday or Tuesday we'll be seeing some storms then. It'll stay clear all weekend though. Take a look at our cloud coverage. You can see from the satellite, that storm system moving in. Should stay pretty clear, like I said, not too bad and should be a, a beautiful weekend. Our temperatures across the country, you can see we're looking at around the 50s over towards us, 53 towards the coast. Down in Florida, only around 85, so still, you know, pretty warm down there, but they've seen warmer too. 70s over near Texas and 54 out near California, so a little cooler across the country and especially near us as we'd like to see some warmer temperatures. Take a look at our weather for tonight. As you can see, clear overnight, a low around 47. Shouldn't see anything storm-wise, nothing major. Maybe a little bit of frost in the morning, though. Tomorrow you can see it's a high as 66, but like I said, a little bit of a frost, still a possibility, but definitely warming up as the day goes on. Take a look at our five-day forecast. As you can see, Friday we have a high of 66 and a low of 50, so looking like a really beautiful day. Saturday we have a high of 76 and a low of 58. There's about a 20% chance of rain, but it should clear out in the morning and turn out to be a good day. Sunday, we have a high of 79 and a low of 55, so still warming up even more and looking like a really pretty day. Monday, however, we're going to see some big storms moving in, and there'll be scattered storms across the state, looking at a high around 78, so still warm, but definitely April showers. Tuesday, as a cold front moves in, we'll definitely see a drop in temperatures to around 60 degrees and even more storms for the rest of the week. So overall going into a pretty rough week next week when it comes to rain. 
So we guys think beautiful weekend, but not looking too good for next week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a shame we get a little bit of warm weather, maybe two days, and then it goes back to this dreary. I feel like April is really teasing. Like one day it's like beautiful, and the next it's like cold. I feel like it's winter right now. I know we woke up to frost quite a few mornings, so it's looking kind of rough, and then it warms up for the day, but it goes right back to being cold. So, but yeah. we'll take it to Cecil Park Room with sports. Your home for the Moorhead State Eagles, this is News Center Sports. The MSU Baseball Eagles put down the Georgetown College Tigers on Tuesday in a 7-3 victory at Allen Field. The 19-14 and 14 Eagles won the match with the multi-hit performances from designated hitter Eric Boehner, third baseman Andrew Deeds, who ranked second nationally coming into the game, and catcher Drew Williams, who went three for four with a stolen base and three RBIs. Starting pitcher Gerardo Arias picked up his second win on the season off of five innings, only allowing two runs. This Friday, the Eagles open a three-game series against OVC opponent Southeast Missouri at Allen Field starting at 5 p.m. The MSU Softball Eagles are having themselves a busy week containing two double headers. The action started on Tuesday with two matches against Butler, with the Eagles taking the first, shutting out the Bulldogs 1-0, but slipping up in the later game, losing 5-11 with a later Butler rally in the seventh inning. The action continues tonight as the 10-22 and 22 Eagles face off against the 23-12 and 12 Miami of Ohio Red Hawks. The first of the games started at 2 p.m. and the second at 4 p.m. at University Field. In off-season news, former UK football student athlete Matt McCutcheon has been hired as MSU's new offensive lineman coach. Moorhead State's head coach Matt Boward had kind words for the recent addition to the coaching staff, saying we are fortunate to have someone of his character, background, and experience. Matt is an exceptional young coach with a great teaching ability. McCutcheon's playing record has him with 31 starts for the Wildcats from 2004 through 2006, earning the team's most outstanding lineman award in 2005. He also helped UK to an 8-5 record in 2006, along with the victory over Clemson in the Music City Bowl. McClutchin also served as an offensive line coach at Lincoln University in Missouri during the 2011 season. The Eagles spring practice schedule continues through the 27th, and their annual spring game will be played at Jane Stadium on Sunday, April 29th, starting at 4.30 p.m. And now it's time for New Center's Eagle Sports Trivia. Where are the MSU Baseball Eagles ranked in the Ohio Valley Conference standings? A third, B fourth, C sixth, or D eighth? Haley, what's your guess? Um, I have no idea. I'm going to go with B fourth. That's the answer, B fourth. I have a lot of faith in our Eagles, so I'm going to say A third. Okay, actually the answer is B. The Eagles are actually tied for fourth place in the OVC standings with Tennessee Tech at five and four in conference. The Eagles are just one win away from doubling up their win total from last season. More importantly, the Eagles are currently on the outside, on the inside of the playoff picture because only the top six teams in the OVC make it on to the postseason. They missed out last year finish, after finishing t with only ten victories on last season. Coach Jay Sorg is in his fifth season at MSU, and he's never had the experience of a winning season so far. But the Eagles are 19-14 and 14 so far this year with 20 games remaining. And they're definitely in a position where they can change that stat line. Do uh, you think that they'll eclipse the 20 win mark this, or do you think they'll have a winning record this season? I definitely have faith that they will. I think our Eagles can definitely do it. And I love baseball, so I've been watching games a little bit. Yeah, I hope they do. It's glad to see, I'm glad to see the Eagles pulling together and uh, holding up the America's pastime. Yeah. Here in the past couple of years, we've kind of, we've had a lot of pros that come from more from the university, and looking ahead at their schedule, out of the 20 games left. There's nine of them home games. So you just got to take care of business at home, and then everything will work out for the Eagles. Up next is sports calendar.
Hey man, you're not supposed to be smoking on campus. Don't listen to him, it isn't like anyone's gonna know he's smoking a cigarette. That's a really bad idea. Remember, Morehead State University is a tobacco-free campus. At the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music, we preserve and develop the art form and represent our cultural heritage through performance, educational outreach, and interaction with the community in the MSU service region and beyond. Thursday, 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. With only three weeks of classes left before the finals, New Center caught up with students on campus to hear about their summer plans. Um, I recently got a house, so I'm going to be staying in Moorhead over the summer, and I'll be working on campus as a SOAR orientation leader. Um, my plans for the summer are to go back home and try to work a little bit and raise a little money for next semester and just hang out with a couple friends I haven't seen in a while and get to know my family here a little bit better. Uh, my summer plans are to uh, go to the lake, hang out with my friends, grill out, probably do some landscaping, and just have a good time in Moorhead, Kentucky. Um, this summer I will be going back home to northern Kentucky to work my summer job with a photography company, and occasionally I'll be coming back down to Moorhead to work with my sorority, Kappa Delta. Uh, my summer plans are to go home, and I'm going to have a job in the engineering field at an office from my hometown, um, but I'm also going to be back in Moorhead a little bit, as a, uh, working as an orientation leader for the incoming freshmen, and also doing some work for my fraternity. This summer I plan to work at Camp Discovery, which is a summer camp. It's a day camp for children. It's like impoverished kind of. And I was there last summer and I really hope to return because I'm an education major. And I also plan on attending a few music festivals. This summer I plan to go back to Mount Sterling for a while, work, uh, hang out with all of my brothers from Delta Tall Delta, and try to have as good a time as possible. And my plans for this summer include traveling the world and visiting every country at least twice. But if my passport doesn't go through, which it probably won't, I'll probably just stay in Moorhead and make sandwiches for Jimmy John's. My plans for this summer is to become Katherine Heigl because I will be in four weddings. So I will have four wedding dresses to add to my already 11. So that's how I plan to spend my summer. Uh, thank you all for watching. On behalf of Haley Murphy and Cecil Bergham, I'm Derek Ramke. And I'm Shelby Steele. Have a great evening. <laughs> Thank you.